This week on Sail Away, we're right in the middle of an epic 1,500-mile journey from the U.S. to the Virgin Islands. Last week, the winds took us on a squirrely route from the Exumas to my iguana. But now... Goodbye, Bahamas! It's time to make the leap into the longest and most difficult leg of our journey, all the way to the U.S. Virgin Islands. But before we do, we make the most out of our short stay in my iguana. Okay, passage drink number one. And instantly make some wonderful new friends who join us for an epic day on Ophelia. This has been a play date of epic and overwhelming proportions, but they're having a hell of a lot of fun. And I try my hand at frying up some conch fritters. Not too bad, huh? Look at that. Courtesy of our new friends. I got my father, I got my son, and I got my daughter-in-law, and I got my grandson. <laughs> it's so good to be in the Bahamas and nice to meet people. We definitely think it's the most welcoming, the most friendly that we've been in a long time. And they just kind of enveloped us into their fold. But the next morning, it's time to go. We cut you in on some of our passage-making tools and philosophies. It's very much a lot of guesswork, a lot of planning. It's an art in some ways. Yeah. Now we just got to turn a little more left. Well, we have a casualty of the passage. But after three days and several major course adjustments, we make landfall in the Caribbean. But not where we were headed. Ever wish you could escape normal life and experience more of the world? So meet me on that island. Well, we did just that. We sold everything we owned on dry land and sailed away. Promise me that we'll sail away. Now we are roaming the planet in search of new adventures and sharing it with you every week. Just promise me that we'll sail away. So hit subscribe and escape normal with us. I'll be yours forevermore. Come on, it's just that little button down there. That's it. to my iguana and we are looking to be good and set up for our next weather window which is actually going to be down to the Caribbean proper that's good and everybody's just kind of chilling and sleeping and we're happy and we're good and we're gonna go take the dog into town and that's the update I have I'm trying to find our way in without uh, running the dinghy green Yep. Okay, that's the drink number one. And we got the conch fritters coming up. Once again, we're getting close to leaving. We think it's still Saturday, or the Friday's a possibility. We're kind of checking our routing, trying to figure out which one gives us the most optimal sailing. Yeah, no decisions until probably Thursday, which is tomorrow. We've not yet been in to see what uh, kind of groceries they have. They gotta have something, but we don't know what. We do know where it is. So we might as well check it out. We're out of all the basics, pretty much. Bread, eggs, milk. We go up there, we turn left, and we can't miss it. Where are the groceries? Where are the groceries? Walk there, turn around. They're, they're, hopefully they're back there in that store still. They close to go pick up their kids. Yeah. <laughs> Every day. So they go and get the kids, and they said they open the store back up. Yeah, School, school's out at 3. 3. Which is 3.15 now, so they're probably... Probably. Probably en route, yeah. If there was something to do to kill time until then, maybe. There's not really. No. And it's kind of good to go for a walk because we haven't done much of that. Uh -huh. And pretty soon we're going to have a passage again. Yeah. Just walking. yeah, we'll be on the boat for three to four days. Time out for a quick commercial break. Now that we've left the U.S. and are back in international waters, we wanted to talk to you about Surfshark VPN. I know you've probably already heard about them from some of the other channels, <clears throat> The Winds, but we have a pretty unique perspective on it. 
Yeah, as you might know, I work as an audiobook narrator, which means I upload a lot of files to different clients. And sometimes if you're not operating from a US IP address, you have some trouble with different file sharing programs. And I had just that issue not that long ago. And Surfshark saved the day. In addition to that, there's also downloading, internet security, and streaming. Not to mention that it's so easy to download and operate Surfshark. Once you've downloaded the software, it pretty much takes you by the hand and walks you through the steps effortlessly to get everything working. And once you hit Auto Connect, you almost don't have to think about it again. And if your dream is to travel full-time or part-time and work, you want the best VPN there is. And we've tried them all. So, go check out the website below, surfshark.deals forward slash sailaway, and enter the code sailaway for 83% off and three additional months free. That's a lot. And if that wasn't a good enough deal, there's also a 30 day money back guarantee. So there is no risk. And while you're there, be sure to check out Surfshark's other products. Antivirus, search, which protects your internet searches and alert, which protects your email or one, which is a bundle of all those. You forgot the most important part. What's that? Football! Yeah! The very first day on land, we made friends with Smokey and his whole brood. We enjoyed them so much, we invited them on board Ophelia. It's almost noon, right? It's noon. Oh, okay, good, good. Yeah. This has been a play date of epic and overwhelming proportions. Zeke doesn't quite know what to do. But they're having a hell of a lot of fun. And they brought ice cream, they brought snacks, Smokey brought beer. Smokey, by the way, that's their father. And Smokey's just kind of the man. We met him the first day we were here and he's been kind of helping us out ever since. He's given us rides, he got the grocery store open for us, he's brought us diesel fuel, he's the guy to know. He dives for conch. His wife makes the conch fritter batter that they were selling over here the night we got here. Check that out. So I've got some oil getting real hot right now. Now I'm gonna attempt to cook some conch fritters. I don't know what too hot is, but I'm gonna try this and see what happens. Oh, that seems promising. Yeah, I think we're good. Not too bad, huh? Look at that. Those are conch fritters. They're hot, but very, very, very good. We need to beg Smokey's wife for the recipe for those. They're so good. So good. Pretty fun to cook. And this, that's just mayonnaise, ketchup, and sugar. Just to taste and uh, perfect. Even though the visit was utter chaos and we were leaving the next day, we were so glad we had him over. We feel like we have friends for life. What's up guys? I'm in my guano snorkeling right now. It's the best. Look at him I feel like we're going to be on a cattle or a with our white friends. Mama? Come on! I got my father, I got my son, and I got my daughter-in-law, and I got my grandson. <laughs> it's so good to be in the Bahamas and nice to meet people. And these are the best people I ever meet who are invited them. Ooh wee! The dog live good, we live good, good and thank God for good people. Smokey is a good man. Willing to do everything will make good for good people for you. Grassy life. They're straight. What I, uh, that you get me right just say? No, not a bit. <laughs> the excitement is palpable on board right now. Everyone is on edge. Not really, but we do have some kind of hard sailing, it looks like, for the first day or so. We uh, are following a route that we put together on Windy. You can go through and put points on the map where you 
think you'd like your route to be and the speed at which you're going and then it'll show you the wind along the entire route but right now we've got what they forecast and that was about 15 to 18 about southwest which we're heading toward the Turks and Caicos we're gonna skirt under the south shore of Turks and Caicos that'll put us on a southeast heading so we're hoping we can get enough good wind angle to sail all the way to there. Then we get to head up a little bit once we get to the corner of the Turks and Caicos bank. We, we know we're going to have some really long dead spots where we might either sail super slow or motor. So we're going to give it a shot. This time of year, you got to take what you get, and this is what we're getting. So let's go. Let's do it. Kick the tires and light the fires. Know what they say? We don't have any tires and we don't want any fires, so let's just sail. Next stop, knock on wood, as long as all goes well. We're back in the US VIs in St. Thomas. <sighs> and then maybe we can chill for a minute. It's been three weeks of just non-stop moving. And that is not usually how we cruise. And it has been slightly exhausting. River said that this was his favorite island, my guana mostly because of all the friends that he made. We definitely think it's the most welcoming, the most friendly that we've been in a long time. And they just kind of enveloped us into their fold. Well, we're really just getting started, but so far things are working out about like we saw them on windy so that's good it's about 23 24 apparent yeah it's kind of it's, it's a little wild it's kind of what we thought it would be though for this first little bit how you doing z good boy. all right chris i'm gonna head in and uh, just take a little nap for a while Okay, you do that. I'll be back up in a couple hours. Yep, <laughs> no doubt. We've been uh, we've been watching this one coming for a while. Somehow we got lucky and dodged at least two. Just sort of blew by in front of us. They all look like they're sort of heading right to Turks and Caicos. Well, this one's pretty wide, and it looks like we're sailing right into it. We can't really tell if there's wind in it or not, but we're double reefed on the main and double reefed on the jib. So, we'll see what we get. Making good time though, in the right direction. Can't always say that. Usually can't say that. Only we were going there. Show everybody beautiful Turks and Caicos. Yeah. This is all. That's it. Sunset number one. The wind was not predicted to be this uh, intense, this, this long. So, we'll leave it down. So it is one o'clock and I just took over for Eric. I will be out here until three. And hopefully it stays the shell. I'm very grateful that it has calmed down and hopefully it stays like this for my ship. And hopefully beyond. But most importantly for my ship. Good morning! How'd you sleep? You slept right there to start with. That's where we all slept to start with. It was pretty rough, pretty rough seas for almost the entire daytime and evening. And so when it was time to go to bed, uh, Lauren just put him to sleep right in there and we used that little Lucy light as a little lamp and he read for a little bit and passed out and it worked great. I kind of had to like snake through 
couple of sort of shallow reefy areas and we sailed up onto the bank which is about 50 feet deep. I was worried it was going to be crazy rough and it really wasn't. It smoothed out quite a bit. I think everybody got some pretty good sleep. And then Chris sailed almost his whole shift. It was about 6.15 when he finally switched the motor on. You can hear it purring in the background. So far, as much as you could ever hope for, the passage has gone pretty much to plan. We were a lot faster than expected on that first stretch. Um, well, a lot faster than you can plan for. Uh, so we sort of got ahead of when the wind came around more in our favor. And we were able to drive down about a third of the way across to DR, which is where we are right now. Today, we're out in the middle of nowhere. And so we really don't know what we'll get. We know what was on the forecast, which is mostly nothing. This is the big wind shadow from DR. And depending on where the wind fills in from on either side of DR, it could swirl around and kind of help us out or not. None of it should be very strong until we get down toward the corner. And then we should start to see the south wind fill in again. And that's when we'll take our shot across to Puerto Rico. To me, this is sort of like the middle section where we knew we were gonna have to motor a good bit. The motoring has been great with that starboard motor so far. Uh, I haven't been really losing any coolant or oil or anything like that. So I'm gonna keep a close, close watch on her because it's probably gonna be good. I don't know, it could be 15, 20 hours of motor. We'll see. Well, we've got a beautiful day. Sure looks like. Cheers. There's still a little bit of wind, so we just got the dip back out. And we are headed basically due south, straight to the R using as little power as we can on the motor. So we're hoping if we get to VR, maybe the wind will shift, get a little bit of internet, we can check the weather again. We're about 40 miles out from VR right now. So we'll get there in the next three hours maybe? passage making and all that and how it's very much a lot of guesswork and a lot of planning it's an art in some ways and the reason is when you're doing more than just like a day or two and you're going to be more or less out away from internet and so you come up with a, a path that uses the wind and the wind window that you get to your best possible advantage, knowing that a lot of it is guesswork because you can only kind of guess how fast you're gonna make it through any section at a time. It depends on whether that wind shows up as predicted and in the direction predicted. So you gotta be a little bit conservative with what you think your speed will be. And what your speed is on that very first day very much affects what you will get the next day and the day after that because the wind and especially in situations like this where it's this isn't like a dependable weather thing you know we're not in the trade winds how soon we get to a given spot will dictate how
how much wind is there and what direction it's going. <laughs> There's so much guesswork involved that once you get going, you've got to be willing to alter your plan and decide how much you're willing to deviate from your original plan to continue to keep the boat moving more or less in the right direction. And last night was a small example where because the wind direction didn't shift when we wanted it to, we were kind of getting pushed up into the lower edge of that bank and there's like shoals and stuff there. And so I had to kind of get creative and sort of go up in the bank and work my way through a couple of those shoals and then finally back out into deep water when, when the wind turned. And then once we started to feel more wind pressure, we decided, you know what, it's better to get south with good speed, we're doing 6-6 six, six now, uh, instead of just trying to point straight at that little mark on our route. And the reason for that is, it's kind of like, it's kind of like playing pool. You should always be thinking a move or two ahead and how what you do now will affect what happens later. And we want to be as south as possible when the south wind comes in so that we can take it as much due east as possible, making it a more comfortable sail, as opposed to shooting down on a southwest track and then suddenly we get the west wind and we got to keep going south, southeast, sorry. And we got to keep going southeast, meaning we're beating into it. So we're planning for a wind that we hope to get in about, could be as soon as 12 to 14 hours, could be a little later. And that's just one of those little decisions that you make as you're going that changes how your route works out. There are situations where you find yourself in a position that's nothing like what you thought the route was going to be, and you've got to change everything. If all of a sudden we started feeling a south wind right now, probably head due east and take it as far as we can and then make our way south. Just because if you got wind that'll take you in a direction you want to go, probably should ride it. I hope that made sense. I've had a lot of coffee. I'm gonna go have some more coffee. You're lucky I didn't wait until after that cup to give you this uh, little tidbit. Well, we have a casualty of the passage. Oh no! Yeah. It was, uh, it was a re relatively, I was gonna say it was a fast death, but it's gonna slow down. Yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, I don't think there's, that'll do it. Coming back from that. There's your problem. Uh -huh. There's your problem right there. All right. right, well, enjoy. You gave us some good years. It, it, it gave us all. Yeah. It's been through hell. Yep. We yeah, got we, it right before we left on Cecilia, so it's been four years. Yeah. You know, I don't think we can expect much more from a $150 Amazon paddleboard. <laughs> so. And just like that, we are sailing again. Just a lovely sail, about 60 degrees apparent. We came over and uh, looked at our wind a little bit ago and it had gone quite a bit left. So we throttled back the motor to see what we could get out of it and turns out we can get about 6.3 knots and in the right direction. So we were able to turn up more toward our imaginary mark that we got on the uh, chart plotter and that's getting us a lot closer to our destination. And we're sailing and we're not running the motor. So when it stops working for us, we'll go back to what we were doing before. said we are off to the races. We got some kind of crazy storms going on over there on the coast of DR and we've been kind of making our way down to the coast sort of southeast waiting for the waiting for ourselves to get to the south wind that's blowing north through the Mona and we're starting to feel that and then all of a sudden this thing starts kicking wind from the west so got the sails pulling and we're uh, Sort of hauling butt right now. Yeah. Now he's got 
turn a little more left. Night number two, sunset. We've had some awesome sunsets with all this weather. After the roughest night of the passage, and maybe one of the roughest we've ever had, we sighted land. Just not the land we were technically headed for. We're almost there! It was three nights, four days. We'll be getting in at 10 o'clock, and we basically left about 10 o'clock on Saturday. Um, and this is Tuesday, so three days exactly. <sighs> We're almost there and we will get a good night's sleep tonight and we get to explore San Juan. We obviously are not going to Charlotte like we thought we were going to. For no other reason than we were really close to San Juan and we haven't been there in about two years and we really, really, really like it and wanted to go back. <laughs> Why not? We're back in the Caribbean. Let's, uh, let's do some cruising like we're back in the Caribbean and kind of just pick and choose where we want to go and go see all the good sights. And that's what we're doing. And we're almost there. We always kind of knew in the back of our minds that if our path took us close enough to San Juan, we probably wouldn't be able to resist pulling in for a bit. And that's exactly what happened. All kinds of stuff going on now. We've arrived in San, at San Juan, I should say. Chris has been working on getting his flight out of here. We're we'll trying to get our detox sticker. We already checked in using the CBP Rome app, but we needed the sticker before they can approve it. I already talked to her on a video call, but we're supposed to call back once we get that. And there's San Juan. One of the best entrances to an anchorage that we've been to. Pretty cool. Smell that land, Zeke, you smell it? Yeah, you smell it. Can you smell the land, Rivers? Can you smell it? Mm. Smell! Put your nose in the air, smell it! Almost 500 miles. We didn't quite go to St. Thomas, but this is the passage. What? Drink it. Passage drink. Cheers. 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 <laughs> Good. Yeah. Makes it worth it. No. <laughs> Our Bahamas drink in Puerto Rico. There are two establishments in Puerto Rico that claim to have invented the pina colada. We figured one of those was a good place to start. It's got pineapple and coconut. I'm just reveling in the, the feel and taste of fruit. In the <laughs> Haven't had that in a bit. Really? He's got a snake around his neck. Oh my god. Yes? Guess who's dressed for an airplane ride? That's all Chris is taking back with him. Hard to believe. Rest is staying here. 
<laughs> no way to carry it. Got three words to sum up the last five months. Folks. I'm going home where life is easy. <laughs> well, you missed all the all the teary goodbyes, but there he went. Bye, <laughs>